Today kicks off the second of three special trials weekends featuring the brand new Crucible maps. If you're hunting for the strongest but most user-friendly PvP builds, you've come to the right place. Forget stressing over what aspects, fragments, or gear to use or how to use it. I'll guide you step by step, giving you the exact builds you need to snag that sweet, sweet loot. Let's get started. First up, let's talk about a killer build for Night Stalker using Gear Falcon's Horberg. You might know this exotic from PvE, but trust me, it's an absolute monster in PvP because it can dish out serious damage to grouped up enemies. With the latest PvP changes, you'll see players sticking together and clustering up more than ever before. Any ability or perk that punishes this kind of behavior is pure gold. Remember when Cloud Strike was the go-to for this? Well, with special ammo being a bit more scarce, we need smarter ways to deal with these hand-holding teams. Enter the Gear Falcon's Night Stalker build. It's simple, go invisible, and as soon as you start shooting, any kill you get triggers a massive volatile explosion perfect for blowing up clustered teams. But wait, there's more. With the right aspects, you won't just get a big explosion, that kill will also reset your invis and give you wall hacks for a few seconds thanks to Stylish Executioner. Here's the game plan. Reload, use your wall hacks to find the next target and blast them. Rinse and repeat, stepping in and out of invis, all the while taking down your opponents from the shadows. Grab your favorite void weapon like Elsie's rifle or Positive Outlook and show your enemies what real power looks like. Check out the Gear Falcons build video over here. Trust me, there's nothing more satisfying than wall hacks and invis. Now let's dive into another build that's been stealthily buffed this season, Stasis Hunter. Here's the deal, in a team shoot meta, getting slowed is basically a death sentence, and nobody slows better than a Stasis Hunter. You've got three ways to turn the tide. Use Bacris and Winter Shroud Aspect to dodge and slow anyone who gets too close, slow down enemies from a distance with your shurikens, or stall out aggressive pushes with a massive dust field grenade. When it comes to Hunter subclasses, Stasis is the undisputed king of crowd control. The more opponents there are, the more fun you'll have turning them into popsicles. Stasis Hunter also comes with one of the craziest movement abilities in the game, perfect for breaking ankles and juking opponents, the Mask of Backrest. This exotic is exclusive to Stasis Hunters and transforms your dodge into a long-range teleport. If you haven't experienced it yet, it's hard to grasp just how insanely fast this move is and how easily it can outmaneuver your opponents, especially those on console. Whether you're getting into a prime position or escaping a tight spot, Mask of Backrest Chris has got you covered. Check out my Stasis Hunter build video over here. Trust me, Revenant is going to see a lot more action this week as people realize the kit is perfect for both zone trials and countering the current meta of team shooting. Just quickly before we cover off the rest of the builds, are you struggling with PvP or going flawless in general? Join my Patreon and get amazing benefits like weekly trials cards with me as well as Crucible coaching sessions. You'll also get access to a private VIP community full of chill, cracked PvP players to to also help you go floors and achieve your PvP goal. And now for Warlocks. Strand Warlock is still the most underrated subclass in the game right now. Let me remind you why this build is an absolute beast. First off, Strand Warlock can pump out more Threadlings at once than any other class. By combining perched Threadlings from Weave Walk with the ones generated when you pop a Rift, you are a walking Threadling factory. Next, let's talk about its one-shot kill potential. A grapple melee followed by the damage from spawned Threadlings results in an instant kill. Pair this with Necrotic grips and it's even more deadly. And if you think Wormhusk is great for escaping sticky situations, wait until you try Weave Walk. Imagine being invincible for 10 seconds at a time. For a Strand Warlock, there's no such thing as bad positioning as long as you have a melee charge for Weave Walk. Combine this with Necrotic Grips and you've got one of the most versatile yet underestimated subclasses in the game. So let's talk about Necrotic Grips, the exotic that turns your enemies into walking biohazards. When you land a hit, these bad boys poison your foes, causing tick damage along with your melee hit. But here's the kicker. Any poisoned enemy who dies spreads the poison to nearby enemies, creating a chain reaction. And it gets better. This effect isn't just limited to melee attacks. It also triggers with any weapon of sorrow, like Osteostriga, Thorn, Touch of Malice, and Necrochasm. All of these weapons are already beasts in PvP, and Necrotic Grips buffs them all. Land a kill with any weapon of sorrow, and your enemy's corpse spreads poison to their teammates. It's like a pandemic in exotic form, and with Guardians holding hands and team shooting now more than ever before, Necrotic Grips is quickly becoming a top tier choice. Go check out my Strand Warlock build over here. 
Not only does this lead to unexpected multi-kills and team shooting battles, but the poison also stops opponents from rezzing or grabbing heavy ammo, making this build perfect for denying key objectives in Trials of Osiris. Next up, we have the subclass I will literally stand until the day I die, Stasis Warlock. Guys, listen up. I've been on a one-man crusade for almost an entire year, ever since I started this YouTube channel, trying to convert everyone to the Church of Shadebinder. And slowly but surely, especially after that Trials we can anomaly, people are waking up to the uncomfortable truth. Shadebinder is the best subclass in the game. There, I said it. It's the strongest subclass in the game, and I'm tired of pretending it's not. No other class can wipe entire teams with just a single button press. Supers can do that, sure, but normal abilities? No way. Shadebinder has five different ways to freeze enemies, and those freezes chain. One freeze can cascade through an entire team, leading to the ridiculous team wipes that you see in the background. Embrace Shadebinder supremacy and check out my video over here. There is no second best. Just quickly settle a very important debate for me. Should a man pay for the whole bill on the first date? Let me know what you think in the comments below and I'll pick one person to carry to the lighthouse this week and enter them in the draw to win this beautiful emblem. Don't forget also to please drop a like and hit the subscribe button if you want to see more builds from me. As a small creator, it means the world to me, so thank you. And now for Titan. No clickbait here, this solar Titan build is hands down the best support build for newer players jumping into Trials of Osiris. Get ready to become your team's MVP. And here's why. Just by playing, you'll be buffing your teammates with restoration, healing, and increased ability regeneration almost constantly. Your friends will be singing your praises, and that's because the heart of this build is the exotic helmet, Precious Scars. Precious Scars got a buff a while ago, but not many people have realized just how insanely powerful it's become in PvP. There are two standout features of the Precious Scars exotic. First, you and nearby teammates get restoration times one every time you get a weapon kill with a weapon that matches your subclass. It's a lot like a mini one-eyed mask, but you get to share the perk with your whole team. Talk about squad goals, right? In a meta dominated by primary fire, team shooting, and hand holding, this means that when you score a kill, all of your teammates start healing. With the right aspects and fragments, you also get a massive 400% increase in ability regeneration, which is game-changing. Second, whenever you're revived or you revive someone else, you and nearby teammates get a 100 HP mobile overshield. That's right, a regenerating 100 HP mobile overshield. Revive your buddy and instantly turn the tide of battle. In game modes where revives are key, like Trials of Osiris or Clash, this is a total game-changer. Check out my build video over here. Your team will thank you, I promise. Next up, let's dive into a super effective build that's flying under the radar. Get ready to be blown away. Most auto rifles average a time to kill around 0.8 seconds, but let's talk about this exotic auto rifle Surus regime. In its base form, it matches that 0.8 second TTK, but here's the kicker. Once Surus is spun up, meaning after firing for about 0.33 seconds, its fire rate cranks up, slashing its TTK to a jaw-dropping 0.53 seconds. That's that's right. This beast kills 33% faster than any other auto rifle out there. Normally, you'd burn through ammo too quickly to keep up this pace, unless, of course, you pair it with an exotic that refills your mag as you shoot, letting you ride that 0.53 second TTK wave way longer than intended. Enter Actium War Rig. This unexpected combo has serious meta potential. When you get it right, you'll be dominating every fight against other auto rifles easily. Check out my Strand Titan build with Actium War Rig over over here. You're in for a sweet surprise. All right, I hope that helped. And if I could give one notable shout out for a build that's been getting absolutely rave reviews recently, it would definitely have to be this R Clock build over here. Go check it out and let me know what you think. Much love and I'll see you all in the Crucible.